Hi everyone, welcome back to the Edgewater Avenue YouTube channel. Today I'm revealing two new patterns and their tutorials. I have seen sets like this for years and I've just loved how functional they are, but they're still just so cute. I really think that this style can be worn by literally any age group from baby to grandma. So I created the Avery top and Gabby bottoms to mimic this type of style. This video does have two tutorials. So if you're just wanting to watch one of them, I will have timestamps so you can navigate to what you need. Before we start, let's go over what materials we will need. You're gonna need swimwear fabric, about a half a yard for each piece. So if you're making both, you're going to want a yard just to be safe. Swimwear elastic. I'm using quarter inch braided elastic just because I have a ton of it that I'm trying to go through, but really the best thing for longevity and chlorine resistance would be using rubber elastic. So I will have that linked in the description. You're also gonna to want to have some basic sewing supplies like a cutting tool and a seam ripper. And for this tutorial, I'm using both my regular machine as well as my overlock machine. You don't need to have both machines. Each of these patterns could be made just with one or the other. But for the bottoms, I did design them to have a fold over seam on the leg holes. So you will need either a cover stitch on a serger or cover stitch machine or if you don't have that, you can use a zigzag stitch on a regular machine. You don't have to make them that style, so if you only have a serger, then you can just make them fully reversible. And in any of my tutorials, you can just use a regular sewing machine. Anywhere that I use a serger, you're just gonna use a zigzag stitch. So if you're curious on how that's done, I will have a video linked. So first we're gonna be making the Avery top, which is a great beginner pattern because there's only a few steps. This pattern is available now at edgewaterav.com and it's also linked in the description. So the top is meant not only to be reversible, but you can also wear the back as the front. So really this top is a four in one. So let's get right into it. So for this top, I'm gonna to be using this white fabric and I'm gonna work through and cut two pieces of the front and two pieces of the back. I try not to film with white fabric just cause the camera does not pick it up and it does not focus at all. So you can't really see in these clips, but I'm actually using two different white fabrics. One is a regular matte nylon spandex and the other is a ribbed nylon spandex. If you're curious where I get my ribbed fabrics or just my solid colors, I will have those linked. So if you're wanting to be able to reverse your fabric like I am, you're going to want to cut one in the front and one in the back of each of your fabrics. But in the end, you'll just need to have two fronts and two backs for your pieces. So now we have all of our pieces and the next step is to match the fronts with fronts and the backs with backs, right sides together. We are going to sew along the following areas and attach elastic to these same areas. If you're new here, you should know that before I attach my elastic, I like to first use my regular sewing machine and sew my seams together with a basting stitch. This allows me to tack the fabric together beforehand so that the elastic application can be perfect. Just don't forget to remove your basting stitch before you finish your piece. And you might be wondering why I'm just breezing past the whole attach elastic thing, considering it's the most common question I get asked. And I'm breezing past it because I've made an entire elastic series on YouTube where I go over the most common questions, I show you how to sew it, and I also show you how to solve common problems like having wavy elastic application. So I've linked that playlist and I strongly recommend watching all of those videos, especially if you're new to swimwear. So now we've sewn our designated seams and you'll see that the only open seams are the shoulder straps and the sides. And obviously the front and back are not attached. Well, we're gonna knock out all of those problems in one step. Take your back piece and flip it so it's right side out. Then insert the back piece into the front piece. Again, making sure that like fabrics are facing right sides together. Maneuver the back piece so you're able to line up each of the shoulder straps as well as each of the side seams and then pin them. Now we're gonna sew across all four layers of fabric on each of these seams, which will fully attach the top. For these, I like to do a straight stitch on my regular machine because these seams are not meant to be stretching in any way that would possibly break them. You could also use a serger for this. Just make sure that you're stitching a quarter inch in from the edge because there's a quarter inch of seam allowance in this pattern. So once those are all sewn, we can take some scissors and trim the excess. 
And this is why I love sewing with a straight stitch. Trimming the excess just gives the most smooth look once the garment is all the way to the right side. Now this top is completed and we just need to take it to the right side. To do this, I'm gonna seam rip about a one to one and a half inch hole somewhere along an existing seam. I like to put this in a discreet place. Through this hole, start bringing the top all the way to the right side. Your final step is gonna be finishing off this hole. You could do a hand stitch using an invisible stitch, or you can use your machine and just do a straight stitch right on top. The reveal is gonna happen at the end, so let's move on to our bottoms. So the Gabby bottoms are really designed with movement in mind. These are gonna be full coverage, lower on the hips, and they're gonna have a little bit wider of a gusset, just so that you don't have to worry about that happening. <laughs> So with that all being said, I decided to not make them reversible. Concealed seams that reversible styles have are not as secure as a traditional seam. So in the spirit of this pattern being super functional, I decided to forego the concealed seams, but just on the leg holes. So it's still a super clean look. Doing this is gonna add a little more security and just allow for more movement without getting wedgies all the time. Now, if you live and die by reversibles, you can still make this pattern reversible style. I suggest watching the tutorial for the Ranger bottoms for instructions on how to do that. But yeah, if you're looking for a super functional pair of bottoms that don't look like a diaper, these are it. Again, they're called the Gabby bottoms and they are on the website and linked in the description. So cutting our pieces, we're gonna be cutting two in our front piece and two in our back piece. Even though these are non-reversible, I'm still using regular swimwear fabric for my lining piece. Now I didn't put a mesh layer of fabric into the mix. I know that some people like to do that for compression. I didn't this time, but if you want to do that, that is an option. So once you have all your pieces, our first step is going to be attaching the gussets. To do this, you're gonna match like fabrics and lay the front onto the back with right sides together. Then sew a seam right across each gusset to secure them together. And you might be asking why I didn't make the pattern just all one piece so that we could skip this seam. And that's because some fabrics require that the print be facing a certain way. And so if you had it as one piece for a fabric like that, one side would have to be upside down. So if you're using a solid color or a pattern that doesn't need to be a certain way, you can totally skip this step and just tape together the pieces before cutting. If you do that, just make sure to account for the quarter inch of seam allowance that's on that area. All right, so the gussets are sewn and now we're gonna work on the waistlines. Open up each piece and then lay them with right sides together. Sew along both of the waistlines and you're also gonna attach elastic here. I said this earlier in the Avery tutorial, so I won't fully repeat myself, but if you need some help sewing elastic, I will have a playlist linked. And this is relevant later on, so I'm gonna mention it here. I'm sewing this elastic with no sort of tension. I just want it to evenly sew onto the waistline. So our waistlines are sewn, and now it's time to attach the sides. And to do this, I'm basically gonna grab one side and start sliding it up into the other. The big thing here is you need to make sure that right sides are together. So when you have your sides all lined up, you're gonna pin and then sew across all four layers of fabric and this is going to attach the sides together. I'm using a straight stitch for this and afterwards I'm going to trim the excess. Now the last thing left is sewing the leg holes. Since they're unsewn right now, I can easily flip everything to the right side so now my bottoms are fully right side out and ready to go. And the way we're gonna go about these leg holes is we're going to first attach elastic and then we're going to flip the seam and top stitch it down. If you have a cover stitch machine and you can do this all in one step, more power to you. Before I attach that elastic, I like to first go in with a basting stitch and sew those leg holes closed. This is gonna make it a lot easier during our elastic application. Then when we attach the elastic, we're going to attach it to the lining side and we do want to slightly stretch. If you're looking for an exact percentage on how much to stretch, I recommend a one to 3% reduction of the seam. If you have an elastic foot like I do, you can just tighten that knob and just kind of eye it until you get a good amount of stretch. <laughs> or maybe you don't understand anything of what I just said and you're just gonna wing it. Just slightly stretch as you go, 
Really, I think this is the type of thing that you can get a good eye for, but I know some of you like to be a little more precise. But if you do want more information on exactly what this reduction even means, I will have a tutorial linked. It's my non-reversible tutorial, and it does go over this in much further detail. So all that being said, I completely forgot to stretch my elastic during this step. So as far as the overall aesthetic, it's not gonna change, but in terms of security, I definitely could improve in that area. Now our elastic is attached and we can now fold over the seam and top stitch. For this, you will need to use a stitch that is capable of stretching. And I like to use a zigzag stitch. And for the zigzag stitch, you're going to want it to be on the tighter side so it can stretch. And I like mine to be relatively tall. I just think that helps the seam sit nice and flat. I mentioned it earlier, if you have a cover stitch machine, you can do all of this in one step. I have a machine that converts to a cover stitch, but I have used it probably a total of less than five hours in the, oh my gosh, seven, eight years that I've had it. <laughs> So I am horrible with it. I'm not going to be doing it that way. So trim up your extra threads and let's see what this whole set looks like. So you already know this set is going to be getting a ton of use in my house. I've been wearing the Avery top as a yoga top for workouts and stuff, and it is phenomenal but I could talk about these patterns all day. I really hope that they speak for themselves and that you consider trying them out for yourself. So if that's something you wanna do, visit edgewaterav.com. There's also swimwear specific sewing supplies like elastic and cordons and fun stuff all over there as well. All right, bye.